Rub up your engines! Damn it, geez, uh, Scotty, I got an O2 Toyota Sienna. When I put it and drive the car, it doesn't take off quickly when it's cold. When the engine is ice cold, everything has to be perfect. They actually get a little bit extra fuel from the computer commanding extra fuel to the injectors that they'll warm up faster and that they'll run. A cold engine needs a little bit extra fuel. What's they warm up? No, they want to run lean to run better. Since yours is doing it cold, there's a lot of things that can do it. So you start basic. Anytime you get a problem like that, always start at the bottom and work up. Change the spark plugs. You take them out and they're old and dirty, clogged up, eh, that could be the whole problem. Air filter, same thing. Change the air filter, a simple thing to change. Change the fuel filter, could be clogged up. Then see what happens. If that doesn't fix it, then you're into a much higher level. If the fuel injectors are dirty and not spraying enough fuel when it's cold, that could be the problem. Now you can try cleaners like Tecron and the gas tank. Eh, it does so much. When I see older cars do that, I get out my pressure machine, hook it up to my compressor, and fill it up with fuel injector cleaner, and then I run it right into the injectors. And I run it directly in. I hook it up to the pressure. Air compressor builds the pressure up so it will push it into the fuel system. So it's actually running on fuel injector cleaner, and that really cleans it. You might pay a guy to do that if it still does it then, because then it gets to a level of, ooh, it can get really, you might need fuel injector and they cost a fortune. So if you can pay somebody a hundred bucks to clean them and it works, start that out. But always start at the basics, spark plugs, air filters, and work your way up when they do that. Because a car has to be perfect to run good when it's ice cold, but once it warms up, they can be off 10, 15 percent and still run okay, but not when they're cold. Ryan T99 says, Scotty, I was wondering what keeps the vehicle running? I start my truck, but it'll only stay running if I step on a gas. If I let go, it stalls up. The most common thing for that is a vacuum leak. When your engine's running, the intake manifold sucks air into the engine. That creates a vacuum pressure. If anywhere off of the intake manifold, say the intake manifold gasket's leaking, or if your PCV valve is leaking, it gets sucked in there, or your brake booster's leaking, there's a hose that goes to that, it will suck air. And when it sucks air, then you got too much air and not enough fuel, and it will stall out when it's idling by itself. But when you step on the gas, that gives it so much extra gas that it can still run. That's the most common thing. Now, there are also things like you could have a dirty math sensor. You could have a car that needs new spark plugs. There's a lot of things that can theoretically do it, but most of the time, it's just a vacuum leak. I got a video. It's how to find vacuum leaks on your engine with a cigar. Watch that. If you don't smoke, you can get a smoke machine or make smoke somehow. There's, you can even get one of those party smoke machines for like $40 on eBay and put a hose on that and run that into the car to make smoke so you can see where the leak is. Or when it's running, if you hear and you get a little can of WD-40 and spray it around and when you get to that area, it runs rough, then you see that hose came off, put it back on. That's the most common thing that'll make them stall when they're idling. DTG513 says, Scotty, I bought a 94 Toyota Camry V6. It has green coolant. It's not dirty or anything. I see the new coolant is red. You know, what should I do? Originally, you know, old ones like that, they came with green coolant. Then they switched to the red coolant, which is an organic acid, oat. And the real Toyota pink one is a Holt hybrid organic acid. They last longer. The green stuff is inorganic acid, which is kind of weird when you think about it. You think inorganic would last longer than organic, but it doesn't. The organic lasts longer. It's okay the way it is, but if you want to flush it all out, you want to get it all out, you could put the red or the pink Toyota coolant in, and it will last longer. It's backwards compatible. As they make it better, it's backwards compatible. And in that case, it really is better, but I mean, if it's clean and everything, and you're driving around, you have no problems, you can leave it alone, and the next time when you decide it's time to change it, yeah, you could flush it all out and put or either the pink or the red stuff in because it does last longer. Jelly Jam says, Scotty, after a third gear pressure switch replacement and automatic transmission in a Honda, will bad shifting and slipping go away? It's been two days since I replaced the switch and so far so good. I'm wondering if it'll rise again in the future. Well, if it did have a bad pressure switch, you replaced it with an original equipment factory one. Don't use aftermarket stuff on that. You want to stick to the original factory switch. It should be perfectly fine. You want to pray that was the only problem and that it's fixed. Strangely enough, depends on the mileage that you had. Let's say you got 60,000 miles now and you replace that switch. Well, 
if the original one went out and they still have the same original one and they haven't updated it, odds are it'll probably go out in another 60,000 miles because if it broke one way, it's probably going to break again. But 60,000 miles, if it's say, well, I don't know what your mileage is, but say it was 60,000 miles, and then you get to drive it that far again. <laughs> You're going to mess with anything serious like sensors, on automatic transmissions, on fuel injector systems. You want to stick to original equipment parts because it's so precise how they meter. That you buy something that's made in China for that. I bought in Chinese parts or I've had customers in the past buy them because they'll say, oh man, this sensor costs $400 and the Chinese one was 100 But there's a difference a lot of times. I put the $100 ones in, they wouldn't even run. And then I'd put their old ones back in and they didn't run right, but at least they ran. So stick to factory stuff when it comes to fancy transmission and engine fuel injection parts. Don't chance it with those because they're very crucial for the correct running of any modern vehicle. Taco Nation says, Scotty, I bought a used 1990 Lexus LS 400 from a mechanic with 391,000 miles for 400 bucks and barely any rust. What do you think? The LS 400s have the V8 engine in them. The V8 engines are very expensive to maintain and it's got 390,000 miles. Now you only paid 400 bucks. If it runs and shifts okay, great. I fly to visit the grandkids in Boston every once in a while. Sometimes we rent a car for five days and it costs like 500 bucks to rent it for five days. You bought a car for 400. You treat it as a knock around toy car. You're going to drive it on weekends, yada yada. But don't think that $400 car is going to go 15, 20,000 miles a year without causing you a fortune in repairs and stuff. It's, they get that old. Man. And I've got customers that have old ones like that and they are toys. They use them on the weekend. Some of them, they look pretty much like a new car. They've been garaged in Houston the whole time, waxed and clean. They only run premium gas and they're nice cars. But you know, $400 for a car like that, as long as it runs, it just don't expect to get a ton of mileage on it. It would be foolhardy to expect that. Mark 2018 says, Scotty, I'm looking for silicone wiper blades. I see PIA brand silicone wiper blades and Michelin endurance silicone. What do you suggest I use? I've been using for a while Rain-X silicone ones. I had good luck with those. I've tried the PIAA one years ago and they seem to be pretty good. I've never tried the Michelin yet, but I'm assuming they're pretty good. Realize that silicone wiper blades, they're not 100% silicone. If they were, they'd be too soft and they'd get ripped and torn and then they'd streak when they wipe. So it's a combination of rubber and silicone and graphite and a whole bunch of different things. And of course, nobody's going to tell you what their ingredients are. They're all trade secrets, so they're all pretty well made. I have yet to find one that was bad, but I'm sure it's probably going to be Chinese knockoffs one day that are terrible ones. So my advice, see where it's made. And if it's made in China, I'd pass on the thing. Their rubber products are notoriously suspect. Any other ones, generally, they're all going to work quite well. One advantage is if you take a company like Rain-X, they're starting to expand. You could go into places like AutoZone and actually buy them there and not have to deal with a hassle. And if you did have a problem with one, you could return it and they'd give you your money back or give you another one. It's always better to try to find what's sold locally than it is to buy it randomly from outside where you're not going to have any kind of recourse. Because like anything else, everything eventually wears out, rubs on a windshield and dust and dirt in the atmosphere. Like I tell people, even if you get a silicone one, you still want to clean them. You get a little water, 50% water, 50% percent alcohol, mix it up, and then a clean cloth and clean them off till the black stops coming off and they're going to last a lot longer. Frankie Apex 93 says, Scotty, I have an 02 Honda Accord 2.3 with 89,000 miles. It makes ticking noise, sound like valves. I was told I need a valve adjustment, so I had them adjusted and I still hear the noise. What's up? Those Accords, you have to adjust the valves. They don't have hydraulic adjusters like a lot of cars have. They're manually adjustable. You got to loosen a little nut, and turn the screw, adjust the valve, and if it's a four cylinder, it's got 16 of them. It's a relatively involved job doing it. And if you got a V6, woo-wee, then it's really a job getting to the back cylinders. It's, it's an almost impossible job for anybody to do outside of a mechanic. You got to take so much stuff apart. But if yours is still ticking, and if they adjusted the valves correctly, hopefully it was an honest person that adjusted the valves because I see a lot of guys, they'll charge for something they won't even do it. But if they did do it, get a listening device, long screwdriver, piece of metal or something. Put it on the fuel injectors one at a time because a lot of times as they age, those fuel injectors will click. And if you hear it's one, you think it's one click and just unplug it. And then when you run it, it'll run poorly. But if the clicking goes away, you'll know it's the injector because they're electric solenoids and they can click. Now, if it runs okay and it clicks and it is a fuel injector, you could live with it. But if the noise bothers you, you'd put another fuel injector in. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.